Thanks for staying with us now. According to an article on Business Day, the announcement must have come to many people by surprise. But the truth remains that the monetary um, tool is one of the measures by the Apex Bank to fight corruption, money laundry, and related crimes, all of which are obstacles to the effective um, implementation of the monetary policy in Nigeria. In its simple terms, the move is aimed at reducing the currency in circulation, which was estimated to be about 12.73 trillion naira, and in the hands of corrupt politicians, illiterate, big-time businessmen and women, especially traders, most of whom do not bank their funds, as well as those involved in money laundry and currency round tripping using the alternative foreign exchange window popularly called black market. Will this new um, change of currency truly help to curb the level of money politics in the country? And how do you think this would impact the upcoming elections? And that's the question for tonight. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us. At we show Africa one of a hashtag we show. So Elsie, I'm going to bring in Kunle in a minute. I just want to hear your thoughts. What do you think this? I mean, when you heard about the move, and how I mean a lot of talks all over social media, how this will change, you know, the game for the coming elections. You agree that this will actually be um, it will make an impact. It will make a difference. So first, your first question. <coughs> It's been fun on social media. <laughs> <laughs> the memes, the conversations, the expectation that, um, I mean, the currency would have looked a bit better in terms of security features and all that. Um, it's been fun looking at the conversations, but um, the CBN governor was at an event, I think that was on Friday, that's the 57th annual bankers dinner. And he made an attempt to explain the reason behind um, the currency change. He called it repentance. Since people have called it recoloring, he, he, he jokingly called it repentance. And he was talking about how um, there is a reason why global standard is you changing it between five to eight years. And we haven't done that in a long time. And I think what was in the bank um, in terms of the money that was in circulation was just about 20%, and that was just a really bad figure. No? So he gave a lot of explanations and um, saying that the way it was also announced, um, people coming out to make it look like they were being ambushed was also for a reason, because if they were going to carry everybody along, they knew that they were going to get a lot of resistance from different quarters, corrupt and uncorrupt, right? And then the incorruptible Buhari, as he put it, um, did everything possible to ensure that um, this was just done smoothly so that we can pass this phase. So it's a lot of tussle for them as well. And he's saying they crunch a lot of numbers and realize that this is what they're supposed to do now. So I'm glad that we're having this conversation because as to how it's going to affect the um, elections, I honestly do not know um, from my layman's perspective because even if you're saying maybe the politicians have money stashed off somewhere, right? Quote and unquote, I believe that most of them are all corrupt anyway. They'll still find a way to get their stash Absolutely. changed. So I would just like to hear what Kule has to would say. think about this and what this would impact the. And also talk about um, the vandalism um, around of course, INEC offices. Of course, yeah, INEC offices, right? Yeah. Kule Lawal, thank you. So he is an entrepreneur, um, he is the politician and the patriot. He was one of, um, he was once the national secretary of COA party and the Alliance for New Nigeria, FCT, senatorial candidate in 2019. He is very passionate about Nigeria, and he's a friend of the house. He's joining us live from Abuja. Thank you so much, Kunle, for joining us tonight. Thank you very much, Uwa and Elsie, and it's always a pleasure to be on Waze. All right, so, I mean, you've heard the conversation. I mean, this is a lot that is going on. We're trying to unpack what this, is, um, what this means to us as a people. So in the, on the streets, rather, a lot of people are saying that um, this Naira rebranding would help, you know, the 2023 elections because, again, we know that politics in Nigeria is really, really tied around money politics where politicians begin to throw money up and down, right? So will this really impact? Will it change anything? Because, again, a small caveat is that a lot of politicians, the last... Uh, what's it called? Primaries they did. It was dollars they were sharing. It wasn't Naira. So I don't even know how this... <laughs> yeah, we don't even know. So I don't know how this... But please help us break it down. 
what is the impact of this rebranding on our elections that is coming in 2023? Thank you very much, Juan. It's a, it's a case of, you know, a lot of us trying to explain, you know, what I think is inexplainable. So I'd first like to start on a, you know, a brief background. To reprint the old Naira, um, 53.6 billion is needed to print 2.5 billion Naira. This was as of last year, and this was from CBN. So to redesign, repaint, or whatever it's being called right now, um, the no figures are not clear. And, you know, with the present um, statistics, present, uh, the st uh, statistics according to the valuation of the Naira that's fallen drastically, uh, most argue that this is not the time to do it. But um, the federal government pleads um, that necessarily it needs to be done. Uh, world standards need to be met. It could help with security. And in some quarters, it's actually being communicated that um, a, an adjustment in Naira, in Naira will help, uh, will help uh, abate um, corruption in politics. Um, I really don't see how this happens. And if you look at Nigeria's history of elections, yes, Naira has been used preceding 2019. Um, but with 2023, Politicians have moved into, uh, they were in gear four before, they, I think they've gone up to gear 10. Um, right now with the primaries, as Uwa rightly alluded, it's, it's transa transactions are made in dollars. And if you're referring to security, maybe guaranteeing security against kidnapping, terrorists, and etc., those also receive money in dollars too, not Naira, and some even Bitcoin as it is. So I don't understand the security implication as propounded by the government on why this decision was taken. And um, now we place the background, let's move into the story. So as regards elections, I'll tell you the truth. Um, the redesign of Naira, yes, will cause a little uh, fracas here and there, uh, politicians who are preparing, but I'll be honest with you, uh, there's, a deadline, there's a deadline for the Naira notes, which I believe is sometime in January. And that's preceding the um, the inducements that would happen in when the presidential election occurs first February, and then following March 11th for the gubernatorial. And B, this is us being this is being honest and candid about the real situation Nigeria has to deal with. Um, politicians do not move money exactly in um, cash initially. Um, right now, what they do is mop up, store the money in banks, or preferably, with the way um, Naira is dropping, it's best to keep the, not, the, the money in dollars. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm not a corrupt politician, but <laughs> I'm trying to think like one. Um, so if you're going to keep the money, it's best to keep it in dollars so that just before February, you can change those dollars to Naira so you have quite a lot more to dispense into what we will call campaign inducements. So I don't think it has any factor or it has any um, um, abating line or margins to the kind of corruption that will be seen in 2023 elections. Okay. You, you have a question, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I was going to even bring him back. So before we go deep into this conversation, to just touch on the what's in the news you took mm -hmm. on the vandalism, um, vandalization rather of um, some of the INEC properties. How do you think that would also affect? Because um, the INEC chairman has come out to say that it, um, they can recover, um, but this is still worrisome because we have less than less than three months to the election. So how do you think this is going to play out? Um, do you think we'll see more of this um, bad um, state actors going on and on? Being, being honest about it, I would say find it very shocking that people attempt to do this. I also find it most astounding that we've decided to play politics right straight out of the gutter of the non-invented um, um, prism which Nigeria has always operated as regards politics. Um, INEC will, of course, be faced with the first challenge, which means it will probably cost it more to execute these elections. Let's quickly remember that the 2019 elections and its, impair, its issues cost us close to a billion dollars 
uh, or about a billion dollars in 2019. Um, if that same amount is the amount projected to be spent, the effect of these um, actors on INEC, um, INEC um, agencies and offices will become quite a, a, a slight, a, a massive increase to the amount of money INEC would use to execute these elections. Now, this is, this for me is not only surprising, but um, let's also remember that Nigeria's security level is at its poorest right now. If I were to sit in the INEC chairman's seat right now, I would actually be looking at a staggered elections, like looking at, um, because um, let's look at it. Nigeria has about, to give or take, 500,000 policemen and about um, 200 and something thousand soldiers. Um, it doesn't mean we can secure this country as we would love to secure this country. So I will think, um, I don't want to discuss the problems, I'll rather move to the solution. So I think we should have a staggered elections, maybe presidential in three states so that the security there is enough to handle anything. Then you do another four states, then depending on how they deem it fit, or maybe six, six states over the course of three or four days. I think this will help um, INEC also recover fully and, and prepare itself for the worst. Nigeria is actually at its worst security situation it's ever been in its history. And I think um, some some proactive measures need to be taken to safeguard um, not only the elections, but also the people voting. Okay, Kule, I was just going to tie this question back into the money politics that we're talking about. If you are recommending a staggered election, would that not also be much more expensive? right for the people that are because now it's a different thing if it is just one day but if it's staggered it means that the expenses will go um higher and we're trying to curb remember we're trying to bring down the cost of elections right that people have to spend so much you know just to get the process out of the way you know would this not be more expensive for the people that are involved in um the elections i want to make um I i'll Go ahead, Elsie. No, I was asking, wouldn't that also make the rigging easier? No, it wouldn't. I don't think so. Um, okay. The truth is that with the Electoral Act, we already have a ceiling on, on campaign funds. This has not been attended to, and hence all the problems, all the money, all the mention of more money being spent. The truth is, like, for example, no presidential candidate can spend more than five billion naira. And I can tell you, averagely, whether donated or non-donated, or from whatever money that was kept some when someone was a governor or someone was a vice president, um, I feel oh, most of them have exceeded $5 billion because this includes cost of jets moving around, money they've given to flood victims, money they used during primaries. They've exceeded the campaign ceiling. And if you've done that, that means you're already against the position. Campaigns are, or campaigns are not necessarily supposed to be about money. But that's what it is here. And we've translated it and started even caring for the money being spent. That, that for me, is totally wrong against the law also and also infringing on the Nigerian Electoral Act 2022. Okay. Sorry, but I need to clarify that part, right? So when you say the uh, spending limits for campaign, doesn't it start counting from when the campaign starts? Are you saying it starts from the activities of the political party even through the primaries and all through the election is that what you're saying now okay um you know it's kind of hard because um if you look at the electoral act 2022 it doesn't clearly state where it starts from mm -hmm. but as in other clients if you have to follow what's being done in other clients it starts from the day you declare which mm -hmm. means walking you through the primaries walking you through post primaries the entire system Five billion naira for me is more than enough. It's a waste totally for me to for anybody to run for president. And if we have not curbed this, we will continue to have politics and voters based on inducements. Mm -hmm. We're encouraging the same system that cannot produce a fully representative government that is of the people and by the people without campaign inducements. Mm -hmm. Let's go on a very short break, right? When we come back from the break, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, we're discussing the topic, um, Naira redesigning, and we're asking what the political impact on the elections will be. And we have with us Kunle Lawal. Now, remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 You can also tweet at us at Wayshow, Africa1 with a hashtag Wayshow. We'd really love to hear what you have to say about this. All right, so Kale, right? Um, <laughs> It's so interesting when you say from where you where you declare. <laughs> so people between that declaration and primaries, that five billion is already gone. I can assure you that. You know. So I'm now wondering um, if we truly want to let's just go by what the CBN governor is saying that they want to curb corrupt politicians. They want to curb um, what's it called um, money laundry. Let's even focus on the one that is really, really tied to the elections, money laundry and corrupt politicians, right? Um, and again, there are some level of security measures with the new notes. So I'm hearing that it's traceable and all of that. Let us just say that come 2023, day of elections and all of that, run us through how this money is being transferred. Because, I mean, I heard a very shocking story of one, of, uh, one person that ran for a particular office. It was overnight. You know, the Ghana was go was moving overnight. Like he almost lost that elections, right? He had to look for money, like that dying minute to get money to go and counter what his opponent had paid for. You know, so I mean, it's just a messy thing, right? So maybe help us walk us through that process. I want to even understand how does this money even exchange hand, and what's the process like. Kunle, are you there? Okay. You're, Go ahead. You're, I'm here. I'm here. So you're asking me the ABC of um, campaign inducements in Nigeria, Please. if I'm right. Yes, help me. And, and <laughs> it's, quite, it's quite interesting. So um, if you're going to walk through from declaration, the first set of money gets lost when you declare, because you must declare with a set of things. When you declare to the party, you must also have done some things. I can tell you that this is as easy as maybe painting parts of the ward secretariat, depending on how high you're running, re redesigning a few offices just to show your commitment and your hardworking nature to the party, you start spending. Um, you now move to talking to the elders. You must leave envelopes. You move to that, you get to try to secure against uh, other aspirants. You are moving envelopes. You get to securing your ticket. You won. You are presented the copy, uh, the campaign flag. Trust me, envelopes will will go out also after you've won. Once that goes on, I will tell you. So I'll even give. So you know, I find it interesting when the media likes to act like they are not a part of the system, and you know they are always criticizing. And the moment you become a candidate, and I've been one, so I understand what the media. So. Normal media, like right now, I'm not accusing Waze, but let's use Waze for an example since I'm on Waze. Waze naturally would love to have Kuni Lawal on the show, and Kuni Lawal would come on the show and have fun. But the moment Kunle becomes a candidate, and Kunle wants to voice out maybe what he has to say, even though the Electoral Act fully states that the media must give every candidate when he gives one a chance, that's across the 18 parties. But what happens now is that the media will now start asking for their own envelopes. It goes up and keeps going up. Media websites, when you're getting towards election, the royal fathers that you're going to meet across who, who are within the, your campaign jurisdiction will ask for something. People who are going to blog will ask for something. Now, the trick is three days before election, and I didn't know this till I ran for office. Three days before elections is when the real money moves. Is when even the numbers, the people who you think are probably going to win the elections, they, they alter within those three days. Because within three days, I would say politicians make it ring. I can tell you that even though you've been putting into your, your, your ward or your constituency or your state or Nigeria, what will happen three days before election is that everything you've done is wiped. Because somebody will come with a clean slate and say, I have this to give, I have this to give, I have this to give. And funny enough, the average Nigerian demands it. We've learned to demand from our candidates. So the real uh, money really goes out really within the last three days of elections 
to election, sorry, than any other time. What happens on election day is probably little baby handouts. But, you know, there's what we call the gatekeepers in politics. You have to, whether you're running a state, you're running a constituency, in a ward, in a local government, the gatekeepers have to be taken care of. And those gatekeepers are what trickles the money down. So it depends. If, if I'm running for president now, I have a gatekeeper for, let's say, Lagos State. And that gatekeeper in Lagos State has, a gatekeep has gatekeepers for other local governments. So I feed the Lagos State gatekeeper. He feeds the local government gatekeepers who feed the, the, the constituency gatekeepers who feed the, the ward gatekeepers. The ward is the smallest political unit which has cancer, which feeds the, uh, this thing. So it's a whole, it's a whole, um, it's a whole, um, how would I put it? Parasitic establishment. I think that would be the best way to put it. And a lot of money gets lost within the system. I'll give you an example, just a rough example to close. Now, if you're going to run for president, Nigeria has about 177,000, I think 680 polling units. As a candidate, if you're running for president, you're going to have at least two polling agents per, per unit. Let's use 170,000 as our multiplication bar. So you have, and you're going to give each of them, as of 2019, you averagely give a polling agent 5,000. So two polling agents, that's 10,000. Multiplied by 170,000, you have 1.7 billion naira just for you to spend as a presidential candidate on election day. You're not, this is not campaign inducements. This is just make, ensuring people guard and ensure, um, or put an eye on your votes and ensure that at every polling unit you are being guarded. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so you, you've <laughs> mentioned a, a few groups of people now. You mentioned the gatekeepers, media, royal fathers, or what they call them, um, the electorate, and then the politician himself or herself who wants to run for office. And we are all in this mess, and of course the electorate as well. That's how the money keeps moving. So in your own opinion and what you have seen on ground with the work you do um, with the college, right? If there is going to be true change of this whole people, this group of people you've mentioned, system. where do you think it has to start, start from? Okay. Um, you cannot, you cannot um, demand greatness if you've not started to look towards meritocracy. So um, as much as we blame the politicians, politicians are less than a fraction of less than 0.25. The entire polit politicians in Nigeria are less than 0.25% of Nigeria's entire population. So if the people actually say we don't want money, finally, that's what's going to happen. I can tell you that a lot of candidates running right now if they weren't funding or feeding some, let's use the word parasites, we won't have anybody campaigning for them. But because we have become a buffet of corruption when it comes to elections, we naturally think, and it's, it's become a culture in Nigeria, we believe once somebody is a politician, he must give something to us. We need to kill that first. For me, the entire power to change this lies in the electorate. We have the laws to back it already. I'll give you an example. So, even looking at even governance, I'll give you a very simple example. You have like, let's take for instance, Etiosa, which is where you are. Etiosa, the local government chairman does not have immunity, which means he can, be, he can sue and be sued. And if he's found guilty, he will go to jail, whether he's sitting on, office, in, see, on seat or not. Etiosa's um, federal government allocation um, as of 2019 was over 483 million per month. The electorate has never criticized this. They've never asked anything of it. They don't care because it's not their business. As long as the local government chairman puts up a good face, gives them a few things, um, does a few noise making, it is fine. So we actually have turned our politics the culture of our politics is corruption. So till the electorate goes out of this, we're never getting out of it. Hmm. <laughs> so this is really scary. Um, because I, I was going to even still ask that, you know, the impact. Because again, everybody is trying to um, almost look like, okay, I'm trying to do something 
um, like worthy, right? Everybody's praising the president that this is a good move. This is this, this is that. I mean, he's showing that, yes, he really wants to, you know, clamp down on uh, politicians, especially that are focused on money and pushing money and putting money in the faces of the electorate and all of that. So people are finding it easy to just quickly whip up um, sentiments to say, oh, yes, it's a worthy cause. Because again, I say in Nigeria, people just like it, make their be like, say, we did do something. That's how I see it, right? It's not really like, so that's why it was important for us to have this conversation. If this was even impactful at all, is it even helpful at all? But from what you're, what you're saying, what I'm hearing you say, I don't see any um, help that this will do, you know, in terms of the 2023 um, elections, right? So, I mean, there's, there's no, there's zero or no impact, right? I mean, there's little or no impact for this coming elections. That's what I'm hearing you say, right? Confirm to me that. Oh, well, well, of course, that's what I'm saying. But I, oh, I also like to cast your mind back to, you know, a few tricks of the um, of the of the monetary system. I don't want to call any particular agency or anything, but a few tricks of the money system. Um, earlier in this administration, I remember when we were being told that um, we're striking a deal with China and the yen, and there's going to be a change, and you know this is going to help grow the value of naira. Um, I'd like to ask, um, what's going on with that? Just a thought. Hmm. <laughs> it's the same way. This, this, in the same way, this Naira design kind of sounds funny at a time. You know, what's most funny is that we're not even being told how much was used to do, to achieve the present um, filtering. Sorry, I meant painting. Sorry. what What's the word for, for the new coloration of Naira? So, um, no, we're not being told how much. But last figures we have for, for printing on, it's everywhere across the world. It's expensive to print money because of the security futures. So, like I stated earlier in the program, 58.6 billion to print 2.5 billion. Now, if you're going to give it a makeover or a facelift, you should imagine how much it will cost. Hmm. I, also, I also do not think that they have come out themselves to say that they're doing this because of politicians and um, this These are just um, opinions and what people are suggesting that this is why they say they are doing it. But if you read up whatever they have put out, which of course I also blame them for their communication problem. Um, I don't think they've ever come out to say, "Oh, we are doing this because we want to curb the twenty twenty corruption, uh, corrupt politicians." Uh, is it, is it uh, what's it called? Lon money laundry. Is happening. Yeah, I mean, money laundering is happening whether everywhere or, or, or not. And I know it's happening. On yeah. the first time. <laughs> you know, so I, I I don't think they've also come out to say this is why we are doing this and ever mentioned the twenty twenty three elections. You know because what? I know they were pointing fingers on to themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's let's wrap this conversation. Kule, if you had something to say, right, um, what would you be counseling, um, especially the electorate? Because again, now at this point it's not so much of the politicians, it's more of us that are the voters, right? You know, how do we approach the twenty twenty three elections? You know, because again, we cannot deny that money must change hands. Like there will be money, the politicians will make it rain. There's a bit of desperation. Oh, they will make it rain. <laughs> Trust me. So, and there's a lot of desperation with this particular elections, right? And that's why you see all the vandalization going on in different local governments and all of that. So much intimidation trying to happen and all of that. So a lot will happen. So what would you say to the electorate? Well, um, what I'll be looking at saying to everyone is that number one, politics is not emotional, so keep your emotions out of it. That's the first thing. Secondly, if you're going to make a decision, knowing you can jack or whatever, you're going to jack and leave some people here, whether it's your dad, your mom, your siblings, your cousins. Nigeria doesn't have an excuse not to be a great country. With about 5.4% of the world's entire natural resources, with the, uh, being the most populous black nation, the intelligence here, uh, Nigeria does not have an excuse. So we need to start going to the nitty gritty, the simple figures. What exactly is going to be done? And I'll put forward something just for the minds of everyone. There are 18 presidential candidates. Do you know not one of them has discussed what he's going to do with an inherited half budget? Everybody has been talking about great things they are going to do. But they've forgotten that they will start with a half budget come June 2023. Start to ask the real questions, not what are you going to give us about education 
or how are you going to make GDP? Or why are you so good at being president? Those are not the real questions. I would like to hear one of the presidential candidates come out and say something. I'm the most powerful arm of governance in a democracy is the Senate. Please don't be so eye focused on the Senate and the candy is being stolen at, from you at the National Assembly or at state House of Assembly or local government. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having this conversation. Thank you. So let's just quickly take a comment, I believe. Yeah, so this says, good evening, my dear Beach Visitors, so what are you saying? Um, so on the topic, whether it creates an impact on the elections or not is not the issue. We have other pressing issues in Nigeria. We're talking about redesigning the currency. Do we really need this? Is this move necessary? I really don't understand. I have really missed the show for the past one week. Thank you. Thank God that is back. Sister Oway, you're welcome back. It's been a while. My name Thank is Daniel Lilo, who is a regular fan. Thank you, Daniel Lilo. Let me just be telling you ahead of time that we're going to go on another break. <laughs> We're going on our, our uh, year-end break. We'll resume, but, but after this week, though. But else, I mean, if you had one thing to say, what would you say? Because we still have a few I, minutes left. I think left. it's one thing from what Kuni said, mm. which is that we should take emotions aside. Um, I know that for many, it is difficult for them to read between the lines and really understand things for themselves. And that is what I really want people to begin to do. Um, beyond the frenzy on social media, beyond the headlines, um, look for the information. I, I will be the first to always say that this government has not done well in terms of communication. Even with the, the event I, I mentioned on Friday, right? The only communication I've seen online about that was the noise um, and just the picking, the, the one line picking that um, Instablog did on social media. And the people, of course, that had over 5,000 comments and people were saying also. So it's good to, I, I think the government needs to do better in terms of communication. And we also need to look for that information to know. Imagine what he said about the amount that goes to a local government chairman. That's a lot of money. Do we even ask the question, like, what are you doing with this money? So what, what is the project that you have done? The person that is there now is going to be gone in a few, in a few weeks, right? They've mm -hmm. collected that money for how many months? What is the impact to the ATS and local government? What have we seen, right? So these are the questions that are important. And he said something about um, half budget from next year. I think that goes back to those who are also arranging the whole um, debate, right? If you're arranging these debates, ask the right questions. Not because you think this is the time, oh, you have the name already, you have the platform, let's just bring them and talk and I'll mm -hmm. tick it off to say, I'm part of those who have um, interviewed the, the, the presidential candidates. Let's, let's just do the work that we are supposed to do um, for ourselves and maybe from within we can begin to change the country. But if we just keep talking, folding our hands and following the noise, then we'll probably be where we are for a very long time. Okay, um, I think we have another more, comment. More comments, yeah. Okay. I, I, I was just going to say to Kunle, you know, even speaking to this thing you just said, the Ocean State governor, mm -hmm. you know, you Please, you are on yeah, your way yeah, out. Actually, um, I, I'll look for that. It's just gone. Kunle, you are on your way out and you are appointing. Is that not fraud? You know, like, why do we keep condoning these things? And can we not even begin to check some of these things that these politicians do? Like, are they immune, you know, to, to, some, <laughs> to some kind of things, right? You are on your way out and you are appointing people. I'm wondering why. Yeah, man, I'm so the, so the, check, the check of a, of a state governor is state house of assembly. Hmm. When we don't care is being appointed into or who is being elected into the state house of assembly you have a state as state house of assembly that has been pocketed by a governor and local government chairman pocketed on the other side mm. you cannot have national system you have a governor of river state appointing over a hundred thousand special assistants mm. that that he should that is crazy. He actually should be impeached for that yes but, you know we just the political arguments and we think some <laughs> things are cool but we, up, but I, we, I mean, we just need up. to begin to ask, and I, I, I think we're coming up with um, one of the debates for the Electoral College, hopefully, you know. Yeah, so but quickly. I'm seeing a headline, I think this was from some hours ago, three hours ago. Um, Adelike sacks 12,000 ocean workers after inauguration, 
and the thrones um Oshu monarchs three or three monarchs yeah well so we're, we're gonna deal I, with I that i think more. this is going to be a very Absolutely. interesting week and um Ad is, is uh, he's ready for them it's winter <laughs> To me, redesigned Naira notes is shadow chasing instead of resuscitating the value of the Naira. You are spending billions to reprint. All the reason uh, poised by the CBN are just on paper. Your guest has made the point where telecom networks not shut down in some of the north to track kidnappers in the past. Did it work? No. I foresee it as a trap for the opposition as they would be closely monitored about movement of cash. Backdoor transactions will be opened for the actors in the ruling party. However, one advantage is that by January, dollar will drop well, well, because the politicians will sell out the dollar for Naira because no politician will part with $100 bills to a voter. Rather, he will change it to Naira to go around and about five and give go around five voters. Thank you, Austin from Delta State. Thank you so much, guys. I mean, we've missed you too. So before we go and show, thank you, Kule Lawal. Thank you, Elsie. Before we go and show, you follow us all over social media at Way Show Africa. You can interact with us further, drop a comment, and more importantly, follow all our engagements on social media, like, share, and invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed our quote for today, here it is again. The re realistic way to reduce the amount of money in politics is to reduce the amount of politics in money. <laughs> The importance of government in allocating wealth and opportunity. All right, we'll see you guys again tomorrow at 8 p.m. as we bring another great conversation to your screen. Enjoy. <laughs>